For instance, this typical equation of motion, okay? Equations that provide, in terms of x1, x2, x3, mean the material coordinates, so the label of a particle, forever, ever value I consider here, I identify a single particle, <laughs> and then there is a function of time here, that is expression, and the return are the three spatial coordinates. So you know, for every particle, at every time, I obtain a set of different spatial coordinates, okay? So I will get, we use this notation or this notation in which instead of x1, x2, x3, I use a small x, uh, a small x, a small y, a small z, or uh, uh, capital X1 and capital X2, capital X3 are replaced by capital X, capital Y, capital Z. Uh, we will use indistinctly both uh, notations. Okay, let's find the inverse equation of motion of that. Well, it's very easy. So, no, sorry, um, yes. Find the inverse equation of motion, but then, in order to find the inverse equation of motions, I want to see if they can be really equations of motion. So let's examine the consistency condition. So if I replace t equals zero in these equations, here I should obtain what? The material coordinates, the reference coordinates. Let, let's start using the real words, the material coordinates, okay? So let's do it. What happens if I replace zero here? This function e to the zero is one. e to the minus two zero is one. This is one and this drops. So finally, replacing zero, what do I obtain? These expressions exactly x one, x two, three. So that's fulfilled. Okay. So that means that this could be uh, motion equations, equations of motion in in canonical form because these x1, x2, x3 can then be identified as the coordinates at the reference time t equals zero. Okay, second. Are these functions continuous? Well, they are, because the, the exponential functions are continuous and everything, so that there is nothing which is this jammers here. There is no discontinuous functions. What about the bionivicity? Look, let's co compute the Jacobian matrix. How do we compute the Jacobian matrix? We have to just differentiate the first equation with respect to x1 and place it here. The differentiation of that with respect to x1 is that term here. With respect to x2, x2 doesn't appear here, so the, the, the derivative is zero. With respect to x3, and the derivative is zero. So that's the first column. Then differentiating that with respect to x1, x2, x3 gives this, this, this row, and then differentiating that with respect to x2, x3, x3 with this row. So finally, this is the Jacobian, now we take the determinant, and by taking the determinant of this matrix, we obtain that this determinant, which is a scalar, is e to the 2t. And e to the 2t is greater than zero, or different from zero for all this. Okay? Except in 14 for minus infinite, okay? But for an interval, a, po a positive uh, interval, that's always positive, so it's full. And that means that not it's not only po different from zero, but it's only positive. So it fulfills the fourth condition, okay? So okay, these, these equations may be uh, the uh, equations of motion of a certain body. I don't know if they correspond to that, or to that, or to that, I don't know. But that, is a, that represents an equation that in fact we could represent now by replacing that in the computer, <laughs> these equations, we could plot exactly what would be a motion of a certain bottle according to the, those equations, okay? And that would be feasible. Okay, so cal calculating now, the inverse equation exists, the inverse equations exist, and now can be computed. Uh, the computation is very easy. So how do we isolate this from this equation? Well, multiplying times e to the minus 2t both sides, then I obtain the first equation, which is capital X1 is small x1 divided by e to the 2t, so that finally returns that capital X1 is small x1 times e to the minus of t. Okay? So I have the first one. The second one, I just, just isolate and I obtain the second equation. And the third one also can be obtained in the same way. <coughs> okay. So these are the equations, these are the equations that uh, represent the inverse equations of motions. OK? 
okay? the inverse equation of motions that are the inverse of those ones here that are the direct equation of motions. These equations, if I replace in here, if I replace the, uh, for every spatial position, x1, x2, x3, for instance, what is the particle that at time one occupies the position one, two, three? What do I have to do? Just to replace here in t, one. To replace here in x1, one, one. In x2, two. In x3, three, three. And I will obtain three numbers. These three numbers are three coordinates, which are the coordinates of that particle at the reference configuration. Okay? 